Pakistan and we are very busy with this conference here. I said, yes, that's the very reason why he has sent me to convey a nice message. So, well, he couldn't refuse. So, I was conducted to his cell where he was lying in bed. He was, I inquired what had happened. All of a sudden, he says, yes, after that, we were sit seated there, and then I couldn't get up. And, well, something has happened, some catch is there, or something has happened, but I can't even move my legs. So I told him that Baba has told him not to feel worried over it, the conference will be held, everything will go happily, pass by happily and all that, and that Baba has sent his special blessings, and his nazar is there. So he said, thank Baba on my behalf, and tell him that it's very gracious of Baba to have sent this message. My salutations to him. So I came back. Again, when I told Baba, well, how is this condition, Baba inquired, I said, it's not good, it doesn't appear to be good at all, it won't be possible. <coughs> so again, the next day he sends me, the next day he sends me three, four times, and there I have a lot of talk with that, those people there, and they think that, well, I am the messenger who, instead of helping his health, you see, is getting from bad to worse. So I just said that, well, whatever you, if you do not want me to approach him, do not allow me to convey the message, say so, I will return. I have no objection. I am just a postman carrying a message, a, a letter to be delivered. So every time they would permit me. Last time that when Baba sent me, he says, remember the appointment that I, you have fixed and the way it has been fixed that under any circumstance you have to stick to the appointment and not allow it to be postponed. So he says, I am ready, but I am unable to get up and receive him. And the Baba doesn't want you to receive him. He doesn't want any receptions or anything of the sort. All he wants to do is to be with you because it's most personal work for him. Between you and him it is. And he doesn't want a crowd around. Right. Well, I went, I went back and told him that it was all fixed and all that. The day had come, the appointed day, and now the story begins. For that particular answer of yours, I have to bring up all these things. So, the day came, four or five of us were there. In the meantime, when the appointment was fixed, he was called, a telegram was sent to Balna to, to come that day, to be present. You came a day or two ahead, I think. Huh? That very day. But you, we, uh, we went to Rishikesh and the next day we visited. Yeah, uh, but came you, you came how many? Couple of days? A day earlier. A day earlier. In what year was this, sir? Which year? Maybe 53, 54. Mm. Baba was using the board at that yeah, time. Yeah. Mm. As the, conf the conference hasn't been held yet? Before no, no, it is not held yet. No, it is not held yet. Mm. So, well, the conference is not held yet. And uh, it's now, the time now. So, we now go. Short distances there. Uh, four, five or six people were there. We had Neji, Nariman was there. Somebody. Some people, Baba's people were there. Kumar, uh, what do you call your Amrit's father was there. Kumar, Shatrugan was there. Yeah. Kishan Singh, huh? yeah. Elcha, the jester, <laughs> he was there. Six or seven people were there. Yes. Yeah. So we went. Well, they had they had created a big show for Baba's reception over there. People had gathered and there were great men there standing there to receive Baba and all. Baba just brushed aside all this. He tried to go inside straight. And they begged of Baba, he says, hey, Baba, just this is the seat that we have prepared for you. Please honor the seat and all that. So Baba stood there, sit down, please for one minute sit down. These people would like to have you here. We have, they were singing bhajans and praise of the Lord, God and all that. And Baba says, I have come for particular, particular work and I, it must be completed and I have come only for that work so I can't sit. In spite of it he sat down. There was the, his secretary for the first time. He says, but Baba, I am your disciple. Please, I am your disciple. Why don't you sit down? Baba just looked at him. I am so happy. For the first time I hear that I have a disciple. 
<laughs> you know how humorous Baba is. I'm so happy. He says, for the first time I hear that I have a disciple. So then, then Baba sat down. For two, three minutes he sat down. Somebody sang something and Baba said, no, it's time. Let's go. So then the same secretary says, but Baba, there's no room for all of these people to go inside. Says, but I'll need some people. I need Ares for interpretation, I need so and so, I need him, and these are the people. There is no need for you all to go there, it's not for you people. I have got my personal work with him. No, but we would like to be there, Baba. Baba says, Baba tried to discourage so many people from not going there, but they insisted. The more Baba discouraged them not to go there, the curiosity was there. So they wanted to know what's going to happen there. Well, we went inside. He conducted us. He was lying there. And Baba went and sat on his bed. He was lying there. And Baba started massaging his body, you see. He pressed. He immediately tried to get up. He was very happy that Baba had come. He expressed his happiness. It was all right. Baba was happy also. And Baba massaged his body. And then he started pressing his feet and legs and all that. So. Then Baba said, don't worry about it, everything will turn out fine. You think that you are like this in bed for so many days now, everything will be over. And now that I have come, everything will be over. You will be able to attend the conference and conference will pass off very happily and everything will be fine and perfect. Mm -hmm. But I have not come for this, Baba said. I have come for another purpose. And the purpose behind it is that, well, <clears throat> We have been hearing, you see, rumors as l early as 1943 when we, huh? 42, 42, we were there, people were saying that, well, Mir Baba had come with women and Mir Baba was indulging in, uh, what do you call, uh, liquor and has liquor and women and all sorts of things. And how is it possible, Baba, such a thing to be attributed to? And this is the... Other thing which is very surprising is that the rumor used to just float from your place to that place. Says, that is never possible. When I came over here first, people started saying things, tongues wag and all that. He says, yes. But then, clap. And this man enters the place. So do you recognize him? Says, no. So Baba tells him to remind him about the day when he met him there. So then he tells the whole story. And he's, he's a good storyteller. A very vivid picture was given. So he says, yes, I recognize. I, I remember. So then Baba says, tell what he told you that day. So naturally, <laughs> Baba says, tells all that he told about Baba. Baba says, yes. Did you tell that to him? My tongue slipped. Then the authority came in. Says, How blessed is your tongue and you. That because your tongue slipped, I am here by your bedside. I am the ancient one. Don't worry about it all. And he went on pressing his feet, you see. And he was so apologetic. And so this. But Baba, I can't now would give you a vivid picture of the authority that was there in that room. You see, the whole atmosphere was full of his authority, of his human love, besides that his infinite compassion. There. And I still remember those words ringing. Because your tongue slept, you are so blessed. Blessed is your tongue and blessed you are that the Ancient One comes to you. And all of a sudden, then he burst out and glorifying Baba, you see, in his songs. He was a good poet. And all, he tried to get up. And then again, Baba pacified him, comforted him and says, Don't worry. Everything will be all right. You will be all right by the time. And he says, Baba, bless all these things. Baba, you, this feast is for you. He says, no time. But at least put your hand in blessing to all these sweetmeats and all things with this. So Baba blessed all that. And we left. That's all. 
and the conference was held, he was all right. Apart from that, no sooner... The, uh, then what happened is, before leaving the room, there was a line of his own adherents that were there, who, was, who were watching and were witness to all these things. So Baba said to them, I had told you that it was my personal work with him. I had warned you in the beginning. In spite of it, you all wanted to attend. Now I, I give you an order which you will have to abide by. And that order is never to leave him, to thick and thin, adhere to him, and just hold on to him and love him as you have been loving all these years. And let this day be not put in your magazine. They used to have monthly magazines. So don't mention anything about my visit or anything of the sort. Remember, he tell, he looks where the disciple of his was. He says, remember this, adhere to him, hold on to him. Just forget about what he has seen and heard today. So that's how he exercised the authority at the time. But this way, through compassion, through love, charity. And there, as you said about that, you reminded me, that was a different aspect, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where he just clapped his hand and stopped the two people, the two factions in the army fighting. That's a different thing. That was another sight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how did this other, this other come to the Ah, then what happened was, that next day it came to, I think, to the years of this, he, by the time now the conference was to be held, so he has to come from Madras, this yogi, Shudananda Yogi, Shudananda Bharati, he comes there. So he comes to, in the meantime it so happened that this message about holding conference, religious conference and all that will not help humanity and all that, somehow or other you see some people had heard there, who, it came into print. And this man who was to preside over the message, and it was there by Mehr Baba at the bottom. So this press, who was to be the president, he read this and he came running to Dehradun. He says, Baba, is this what you would ask us to do? If that, if that is the case, then we shouldn't hold this conference. So he says, no, no, you continue with the conference. This is what I say. There will be so many people from all over the world who will say so many things. So this is my say. You all can continue with it. So that's how he came into contact with of Baba first. And then he started coming into contact gradually, he wrote Baba and all that. And Baba permitted him to be with him close. Mm. That's how you find him in the pictures and the films. Mm. Then later on he was invited to Russia. He went to Russia also. Mm. Yeah. He is a, he's a yogi of repute, there's no doubt about it. He's a good person that way, he's a good person. Yogi Shadanand Bharat. He had a lot of contact with Baba before he went to Russia. Yeah. yeah. He went to Russia? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he was invited. He didn't go, he was invited there. Huh? Not, not, on, not, not for Baba. He was invited in his own capacity as a Maha Yogi and a poet and all that sort of thing. For meditation and classes and all that. So that's the story about that. Hmm. Uh, there was there was a certain person like uh, our uh, Gil, you see, who was <laughs> looking forward to realization and God realization and all that, you know, and he wanted, he was a sincere person and all that, and he was meditating in a cave for quite a long period. And years passed by, and the cave was so remote in a forest area, nobody ventured to go there and inspect it or anything, it was just lying there. It was a natural cave. So he was happy there, meditating and all that. And as Baba would say that he meditated for so long, his eyebrows, you see, eyelashes became so long that the dust, the floor, you see, of the cave, and his hair got matted and all that, and he was there. One day it so happened, it was to happen like that, so it did happen, according to Barasar's story, that there was a person, you know, an aborigine, in the, of the area, local area, the Ebo went, uh, he was hunting, and all of a sudden he lost his way there, so to say, and he saw a cave there. So he came, he was a very happy person, Ebos are very happy people, you know. So he comes there and sees a man, the old man like that, and seated all quiet, 
So he thought, but this poor man is suffering it. an ordeal. <laughs> poor fellow is suffering all by himself here in this jungle. Why should you sit here like this? So he puts his hand on him. Brother, no answer. So he shakes. So he opens his What are you doing here? I have you lost something here? Why are you? He says, No, I have not lost anything. Have you had a fight with your family, or wife, or children, or anything like that? Why are you here? No. So knowing fully well that this person, an ignoramus person, wanted to this. know the highest of the truth, it's not possible. But because he was himself on the low level, that old man, had he been on the highest level, he would have come to the level of this man also. Yes. He thought that, well, what can he understand? No. What I am doing here? So he just tried to put him off by saying, gain some damn story, you see. So he says, yes, he has lost something over here, and he came to find it, but he has not found it yet. So he is waiting till such, till that time, till he finds it. He says, what is it lost? What is it that you are lost in this area? It all belongs to us here. We know every inch and, what do you call it? Yeah. Look and corner, every inch of the ground mm-hmm. is under my foot. I know it. Help me, tell me, I can help you. He says, you won't be able to find it. He says, no, tell me, describe me, what, what sort of a, animal you are lost? And he says, well, I don't know what to say, but will you be able to find for me? He says, yes, and if I don't find the, the person says, uh, before the next day, in 24 hours, I promise you I will do it, I will, otherwise you don't find me. Yeah, and you know these abos are so strict with the words when they give the word. So he says, describe me. So then this old man, trying to just put him off. I will do it. I will. Otherwise, you don't find me. Yeah, and you know these abos are so strict with their words when they give their word. So he says, describe me. So then this old man, trying to just put him off, describes the Lord that he he wants to have a darshan of. He wants to have a glimpse of the Lord. He says that I have missed a deer. Ah, yeah. I will, I will get a deer for you. Just yeah. describe what sort of yeah, deer it was. So he describes the whole form of the Lord. He says, is that so? That's how you have missed him. He says, yes. It's all right. So he goes out in search, goes out not knowing that he, it, it was not lost here. Yes. So he goes on searching and searching. Night has passed by, the next day has passed by, the time is about to finish now, 24 hours. On the dot of the moment. He says, well, it's no use to live now. I had promised the man to bring his lost and it's not found yet. So what's the sense of my living now? So he puts his, fixes his arrow to the bow and is about to shoot and kill himself. Just then the same appearance of the Lord was there. You see, that's what where innocence comes, you see, and sincerity. Oh, he says, you are the one. So he saves his life now. So he, with that, he had a rope there, he ties him. Oh, he will be so happy to see you. How do you have my body? So he ties him there. And he drags him. Come on now, come on to the place. So that man, of course, the old man thought that it was good riddance that he had gone, he wouldn't come back. You see? Now this man is still absorbed in his samadhi. <laughs> And here he says, hey, come here. He couldn't take him inside the cave, he had to bend him. And he was, so he kept him there. He says, come here, come here. The lost is found here. So he doesn't give him any countenance or anything of the sort. In eventually, I think the old man comes out. Huh? Yes. yes, comes out. What is it? What is it? Why do you want to disturb me? What is it? He says, here it is. Here. And immediately, the thing had disappeared. So where is it? What, what do you have you come? Why do you disturb me like Oh, he says, what a thing it is. That it was here, I, I swear, it, I had brought him here. It has disappeared. How could it go away from here? So he says, don't, don't disturb me now. He says, no. That means that I have cheated you twice. First I was... I was trying to bring you your lost and I had found it and brought you and you take me to be a liar. So it's worthless for me to live. So he again pulls his arrow. Oh, I say, yeah, yeah. To kill himself. Yeah. So it's worthless now. No, there was actually an empirical voice, Akash Moni as you call it, 
when he when he pulls he kills himself yeah, again. Saying, yeah, he says it was only because of the notion that people see me, but this man who has been in the cave for so many years hasn't got that uh, doesn't deserve to see me at all. And then he says, I don't know anything of this deserving and not deserving anything. I know only my word that I have given to him. And now if you don't appear here, now I am off. And so at this scene... So he wanted to kill him? Yeah. So and then again there was a second appearance. Yeah. <laughs> and with that appearance that old man benefited. He says, yes. And he bowed down at the man, ordinary ebo, you see. So the Lord is like that. He is that. No meditation and all that is all bunkum, you see. It's all this. <laughs> You're all make believe things. It's soothing. Just as you have your music to soothe your nerves, it's soothing to your soul. You But what does it Intrinsically, that innocence being most natural. But uh, somebody asked me, and I remember to have answered the person, what did, did I miss Baba after he dropped his body? I said, no, I don't miss Baba, but I miss his silence, I said. Yeah. The same silence of which we were all fed up of. So often we complain to Baba about his silence and when he would break his silence and all that. In answer to that, one day in 1954, he just dropped the board and says, from now on I won't use the board. And well, that was a good omen, we thought, that he would now break his silence. But days passed by and there was a total vacuum of conversation days. And then he started these finger gestures. <coughs> He himself would say, what a binding it is on me. He, he himself got bound, you see, for a purpose, for our sake. And a beautiful thing, you see, developed out of this one little question that he said, that throws some light on silence of his. One day he asked us this question, as to Why people shout at one another when they are angry? So we say, well, they, they shout because they are angry. They want to express their anger. He says, yes, but they can express their anger. A person is seated by your side, you see, and you just shout at him. Why do you shout at him? <laughs> can you not speak softly or do anything like that? So then we give different types of explanations, we give different types of things that we may have thought of, you see, at the time. But that never satisfied him. So he gave the answer, he says, when a person is angry on another person, that person is far removed from his heart and a distance is created. And that's why physical reflection is that you just shout at the person. Mm, that's what he told us that he is far removed from the heart and the distance is created. So you shout. And the greater the distance, the greater the shouting is. <laughs> mm. And louder it is. And so you just go on shouting at him and all that and he barks at you and you bark at him and all that. So he didn't stop there. Maybe he wanted us to have a different view point, you see, of a different aspect, and then, but he, this was just an excuse, and what he said later on was, soon after this, he says, now take the other case, when a person is in love with another person. Excuse me, yeah. Oh, Rhoda, I never thought that you have grown so old. <laughs> <laughs> So what ha you had not heard this before, Rhoda? You heard this, the yeah. first part you heard? Anger I heard. Her. So then he didn't stop at that. And uh, 
<laughs> so he didn't stop at that and he started saying that, well, what happens when two people are in love with each other? So, how do they speak? So he said, they speak nicely, lovingly. He says, no, but what about the tone? He says, speak softly. Because there was a reference to context. So he says, yes, they do speak softly. And the greater the love, <coughs> softer is the tone. And when they fall further deeply in love with each other, then the whispers are there. And they are still further in love. So then they just gaze at one another and look at one another. And there's no word needed to be exchanged. And how much more I love you. So there's no need even to look at you or gaze at you. Maybe that's the reason why he has observed the silence. There's no need for any exchange of words. Mm. Mm. It was very good to hear that, you see, that he's so close to us, so, so very close to us. As he has said that I am closer to you than your very breath, so how, how, where is the scope for any utterance, any word? <coughs> Whether the world accept his, accepts his closeness or not, it is, it is immaterial for him. He is close, so for him there is no need to speak. And it is so true that whenever people came into his contact, you see, and there was a little exchange of whatever the signs or words that were there through the interpretations and all that, he spoke to the heart of the people. So to say. There's no doubt about it. It just went deep into the heart. So often in the midst of conversation or intense activity, you know, all of a sudden Baba would just stop being active, I should say. That's the only way to interpret that particular act of his. And immediately we would all just keep quiet. Either look at one another, gape at one another, or just keep quiet or look down, you see, not knowing what to do. <laughs> and he would be there, but he wouldn't, he, although he would be there facing us and we facing him and all that, but he would appear to us as if he is far, far away from us all. Hmm. Did you ever ask him about that? No, we didn't ask. And uh, quite often I have seen him also, even in the midst of a crowd, apart from his close ones or disciples around him, suppose while traveling in a train, say, in a third class compartment or anything, he'll be with, like one of the passengers and all that, and just inquiring or asking or chatting and all that with his signs. Whenever he used to get that mood or impulse out, he would cover his face with a shawl and sit quietly. Why he did it, we don't know. You know, you know that story? This is what I've heard heard from reliable sources. So those were the days when I was a kid, you see, I don't know anything about it. You see, he being the ancient one, you see, even the, the oldest amongst us remains a kid, you know, <laughs> because we are talking about the ancient one. So it so happened one day that Baba was giving an audience to the public. And then when each one had his or her own turn and the hall was at, absolutely naked, so he sent, he gave word to the <coughs> one who, or who was attending. I think it was Norina or somebody. Uh -huh. Some, somewhere, I don't, I don't remember. That person even told me the name of the town. So Baba said, uh, is there anybody left now? No sooner I leave this room, I won't be seeing anybody now. No more requests afterwards. So that person, I think it was Norina. So she went round and found, I mean, nobody was there. 
So Baba says, go and have a good look. Later on, don't tell me that there is one left out. So she again goes back. Do you know how Baba's ways are? A person, one who comes in contact of Baba, naturally do doesn't say that, Baba, I don't see anybody, why do you send me out now? You see, the person again goes out to see. So she went out and saw there is nobody, nobody Baba. She says, go and have another look properly. So she, uh, she said, that, well, let us see whether there is anybody outside or anybody there. So sure enough, there was a lady outside on the, what do you call it, curb, mm -hmm. footpath, we call it here, <coughs> sidewalk. So she was waiting and looking hither and thither. So Norina thought that most, most probably she is the one who is waiting, not knowing the address or anything like that. So she approached her, says, come inside. So she says, why should I? <laughs> oh no, then uh, seeing her, she immediately went and told Baba, yes Baba, there is one lady. So Baba says, call her inside. <laughs> so then she, she approaches the lady and says, uh, come inside. Says, Why should I? Says, well, you have been waiting for him. Says, no, I'm just, just looking here. But the man inside wants you, come inside. But why should I? Says, because the man inside wants you. And that's how the first meeting between the daughter of Einstein and Baba took place. And she began to write letters and Norina fed her with Baba words and messages and all that. And that's how Einstein came in contact of Baba's words and messages. And there were exchanges of letters between him and his daughter and then between uh, Norina and Einstein like that. But there was no direct contact that I have ever heard of. Might have been, who knows, I know nothing about it. The Marina wrote to Einstein? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the daughter. So now that Elizabeth and Kitty are here, ask them. Yes. Yeah. have you asked them? So make it a point to clear this point. Baba had said nothing about surrender. Because surrender is so personal. And is so intimate that to even ask him, Baba, one day I'll bring you to that point. Baba received a communication, a letter. Baba, I long to surrender to you. Please permit me to do so. And Baba had a chuckle. He says, what is this? This fellow is asking to surrender. He wants to surrender and he's asking my permission to do that. <laughs> How can that be a surrender, you see? Because I asked him to do a surrender. He surrendered that. The surrender is spontaneous. It's one own personal, so intimate a thing, you see, that one surrenders without any question or query or without any prerequisite conditions, you see. Nothing. He just surrenders. And surrender does not mean, as Baba says, as uh, some, somebody came to Baba at Mehrabad, you see, and said, Baba, I have led a life, you see, family life for so many years. I'm so fed up with my wife and children and the world <laughs> that I am now, I am determined to surrender to you. <laughs> so, please accept these, you see, these children and this my wife and all that. And I just want to surrender to you. So that's no surrender what? It's just, what is that? Surrendering your responsibilities? On the contrary, when one surrenders to him, one shoulders the responsibility. You see, there's a world of difference. One wants to have an escape through surrender, that is no surrender. One dares to surrender when one dares to shoulder the responsibility that is laid upon one as the great actor on the stage that he has put forth, you see. And one has to play his or her part the best when one surrenders to him. Where he is neither elated with the success nor depressed with any failure, because anything that he or she does and plays he, her or, or his part knows fully well that it is there to entertain him, to please him. And even when you play the part of a great sufferer and you suffer, you know that, that it is 
This suffering is dedicated to him because you are entertaining him. It's he who is the producer, director of the great drama. Do you suffer when you are given a part on the stage to suffer, you say? Do you, do you really suffer that time? Yeah. You have to now. Sure. If you want to make uh, the audience feel that you are suffering, that means you must go through that suffering. Mm -hmm. hmm? But does that suffering affect you in your life? No. That's how one has to live in the world. Mm -hmm. See that? <laughs> That's what he said. Hmm. Same thing, if one is, uh, suppose if you are crowned queen on the stage, and you have to not, you have to play your part so well. You have to carry yourself to such a degree and such a limit that you must make others feel that you are the queen, the empress. You have to do that, isn't it? You have to feel the, that you are the queen. How, how others will feel about it? But does that affect your life? Out of the stage, what are you? Your crown is thrown out in a junk, you see, box and this and that and all, nothing. It doesn't affect you. Likewise. Neither the success nor the suffering should affect you or your defeat. It's just you're playing the part and that's the person <coughs> who has completely <coughs> surrendered to him without even uttering a word that he or she has surrendered to him. That's when one shoulders his or her responsibility 100% the part that one has to play. Baba said about uh, dealing with one's parents, about uh, seeking the blessing of one's parents or coming to... Yeah, to be a he emphasized this point very much. Yeah. And it is... It's not something new here in the East. It is so common that one has to... You see, in the East, the children are brought up from the very beginning, where they are taught, they are disciplined to pay respects not only uh, to their parents but to all elders who are older than them. Suppose if I am 18 years old and there comes a person who is 25 years old, I would just, and if there is no seat there, I would get up from the seat and offer him the seat. You see? That's how we have to. Uh, respect the age and uh, the person who has gone through more years than one has because of the experience that he has gone through that. It has to do with the experience that one has. So from our childhood we have been disciplined to respect our, and uh, revere our parents and of course it's gradually fading out but then the first thing in the morning what we have to do is to uh, bow down to our parents with great, with great love and regard, respecting them as our absolute superior and elder to us, and have their blessings for the day. For whatever we did or whatever we would want to do, person going, boy going to school takes the blessing of his mother and father and so forth and so on. So. If there is any venture on one's part and when one becomes mature and is an adult now, so uh, that doesn't mean that he's uh, totally independent of the blessings of his elders, parents. Especially on the path when one wants to renounce the world and go out on his own, it is considered that such a renunciation would bear fruit if it, has, if it carries the blessing of his parents. And Baba also time and again reminded us about it. He tried to tell his own to make up with the parents if they are cross with one another, and the child is like that, or the son or daughter is there, go and embrace him. Or he will himself involve in this and bring about a reconciliation. So that there must be a happy blending of the feelings between the parents and the children.
it has to, most probably it has to do with some impressions or something like that. I don't know anything about it. But he he wanted that done. It, suppose if somebody, a, a youngster has come without the permission of his parents, he would ask him to apologize for it on his return and say that, well, Baba told him to apologize for it and that the parents should forgive for that, for, a, for his acts, you see, of having come without informing the parents. It's like that. Mm. So where it leads you to bring uh, you to him, then there is no consideration whatsoever. But if you were to go on your own to renounce the world and all that, take the blessings of your parents. You know, there is Nothing should come in the way where he is, you see, where you aspire for him. Nothing should be there. Nothing should yeah. stand in your way. You have to deal only with one. Yes, yes. Yes. And here you have to deal with so many, so, you yeah, see, and you yeah. get yourself lost in that. Yeah, you get all tangled up yeah, and then you, you just get more really frustrated because more you can't pleasure. possibly cope with all of it. You can't please all. You're just, you're just you know, yeah. a little human being. You can't please all. You can please one. So why don't you take the shortest cut, you see, to please the one? <laughs> you think I can please one? Hmm? You think you I can please very one? Very rarely one can please him. Very rarely? Yeah, but... Uh, one can have a go, you see, it's, it's not Make impossible, mm. <laughs> but it's easier, you <laughs> see, and it's, it's the surest way, it's the only <clears throat> way, I should say, not the surest, the only way, is to please him, instead of pleasing lot many, you know. Once you please him, you please everyone. Yeah, please everyone, you please everything, <laughs> everybody. Mm, it's a shortcut. <laughs> Why do you go in the long way around, you see, that you, if oh, you, if you embrace the whole world, then you can embrace the Creator. Why not embrace the Creator and by which you will embrace the whole creation? Mm. Mm. But then, that is difficult because you will say that, who is he, what is he, I haven't seen him, I haven't met him. How can I love him? How can I be his? How can I be holy and solely for him, whom I don't know, whom I haven't ever seen, ever been with? It's just two years or two and a half months that you have heard of him and all that, you say. But then all this is baloney, you see, on your part, this thinking. Hmm. That's true. And Randy last night put it very, very simply. He, he said, always puts things very simply for you. I know. He's <laughs> such a great help and sweetheart, yeah. Mm. And see, he said that either, if there is no God, then, then what the hell, you can just do what you want. And, yeah, if, absolutely. and if there is, then, then you should do what he pleases. I mean, what he makes, you know, pleases him, period. Mm. I mean, that's it. It's either one way or the other. And since I know that there, there's something, I mean, there, there just can't not be somebody because it, it's just not in me to feel that way. So that would mean the other choice. And the other choice is, you know, it's just really it's pretty extreme. It's pretty extreme. Yeah, it's really simple, but I don't know. We'll see. <coughs> Thank you. Don't thank me, I thank you people, you see, time and again. Don't thank me. I do because I you know, just... I know how you must be feeling because I know how I feel, you see. <laughs> 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 I know it from that. I know it, you see. But you could just We have been talking it. of it, you see, since eight o'clock in the morning. Nine o'clock, yes. no, what is the quarter to nine, you see. Same theme. It's not just today. It's past 45 years now. The libraries of the world are full and replete with the same thing. Everything is just full and replete with the same thing. So simple, yet so far removed from us. So close to us that we can't grip it.